Hi everyone and welcome back to the Velvet Lounge cooking session. Yes, oh my god, on the menu again, fish. We can't get enough of it in the summer. This is a beautiful sea bass and it came out of the waters of New England. And what we're going to do with this today is we're going to bake it, a proper bake, so that your fish does not come out soggy. It doesn't come out dry. It will come out just perfect with a bouquet of spices that should be kind of exciting because a lot of the spices will be familiar. And the way we prepare this is sort of unique because we will only put spices on the inside of the fish. This, this fish was already um, dressed, so it was gutted, it was scaled. Um, yes, I'm leaving the head on. You can cut the head off if you want to. Um, but what I'm going to do is get right into this with you. So what we do, as I stated, is we're going to splay this fish open. So, I'm sorry, I'm filming myself today, so this is going to be kind of difficult. And so you simply want to open it so that it's all laid out flat. I've already cracked the jaw, so you do have to sort of break the jaw and snap it back to keep it open, as well as the side um, fins, which were cut off. So this is, you know, pretty nice and open. And then what I'm going to do is really just start layering in my spices. So let's see what we're gonna do. So before I start layering in my spices, what I should have said is you do want to put some olive oil down in your pan because if you don't, your fish will probably stick because of the oils and, I'm sorry, the skin. Um, so there's not enough oil is what I was going to say in the fish um, for it not to stick. So all I do, as you can tell, is I simply, re I don't like go to great, you know, like you don't have to sit there with your hands and rub the oil all over the place. I'm using an extra version olive oil. The fish does not need oil in the inside. You want this fish to not cook in fluids or oils. You want it to basically cook due to the air in your the hot air in your oven. Um, we have a convection oven, so um, it's an air type of cooking um, or hot air, if you will, and it works out really well. And filming by yourself is really not easy when you're also holding the camera. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but I wanted to get this video out there, so I'm going to hang in there like a trooper. And so what I'm doing is sprinkling some dried dill weed. And dill is excellent on fish. You really want to make sure you hit all of the inside of the fish, all of it, because you want that um, flavor to bake all the way through. Next, I am going to use one of my favorites, some organic dried ginger. And you don't want to go too heavy with this because you will be using pepper. And as you know, and I've talked about before, Ginger does have like a little bit of a pepperiness to it. It has a tiny bit of a kick. And next, I'm going, which is one of the surprising spices, I'm going to be using some oregano. So you want to just go right from the tail all the way up. And be generous with your spices, but, you know, don't overdo it. And also, if you like a little bit more of a particular spice and a little bit less, you know, there's no hardcore rules, just don't use too much because you can always add, you can't really subtract. And then I'm using a sea salt, very coarse. And I am going to use a tiny bit more salt than I would normally use. Because once again, you're only going to spice the inside of the fish. 
Next, I am going to apply some dried parsley flakes. And dried spices are best for this recipe. So fresh spices will add too much um, fluid because it will produce a little bit of water. Um, and you're not trying to do that. And you can see, I mean, I'm being a little heavy-handed there. And for this particular recipe, that's totally fine. Some people have asked, like, why do I shift my pan around like that? I do that so that some of the spices get on underneath the bottom of whatever protein I'm cooking. Um, especially if I'm only spicing one side of it. Next, I'm going to add some kitchen pepper. And we do have a kitchen pepper history video coming up um, so that you can make your own kitchen pepper and also learn about the history of it, like why it exists, who created it, where did it come from, what year was this um, incorporated into cooking. So I'll turn it back that way. That's looking really good. And last but not least, once again, I'm using dried, but this is going to be granulated garlic. And I am, we love garlic in our house, so we're not shy about it. Plus, it's very good for your heart. Um, so I really want to see, like, that garlic in there. And when you cook this, you know, the spices will cook and blend in, so you will not have piles of dried spices on your cooked fish. I promise you if you do this the right way. So next I'm going to put this in the oven for approximately 30 to 35 minutes. I will check on it if it needs to cook a little bit longer. I will do that in two to three minute increments and then I will take it out and we're going to be serving this with a um, oven roasted corn that we make. And I will be back in a moment. And welcome back. So do me a favor, please. If you guys could please subscribe to our channel, share our videos, please leave comments, and also give us a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Um, we're, you know, really trying to come out with a variety of com content for everyone to enjoy and learn from. And another... Um, thing that you might want to do if you ever try our recipes is of course you can always replay the videos while you're cooking. Um, I find that to be helpful when, when I'm testing a recipe that I found online that might be new. But anyway, here is our corn. Um, it's been cleaned, it's been shucked, and what I'm going, and I have a couple pieces already going in the oven. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm simply going to put some olive oil on it and you don't need a lot you're probably using like a, a teaspoon per um, cop, corn cob so you only want you know a little bit you don't want a lot and then I'm going to put some parsley I'm not going to be shy about it we're going to put plenty of parsley on this we have this rolling trick that we use to get the spices all over everything. I'll show you that. And then my salt. Once again, I'm using a coarse um, sea salt. And then I'm going to put my dried garlic on that. Um, these were soaked in lemon, so they will have a little bit of a lemony bouquet to them um, after I wash them. And then next, this is almost a sacrilege for some people. Um, I'm not sure how it would work. If you use fresh Parmesan cheese, I think it would be too melty. Um, so I'm going to be using a, um, like this product, <laughs> which is imported, it says, from Kelowna. And um, it's a grated, you know, pre-packaged Parmesan cheese. I find that it works the best. And so next, what we do is once again, you know how we feel about pan action. 
we start, you know, rolling the food around in the pan. You, as you can see, I did not pre-grease or pre-oil the pan. It's not needed because you have all of that olive oil goodness in there. And then you can even, like, take your fingers, if you have some spices and cheese laying there, and just pick it up and sprinkle it on top. And I, like, I'm going to apologize again for the quality of this video. I'm hoping a stabilizer removes some of the shakiness. It is difficult filming and trying to prepare at the same time. But, hey, it was like an Olympic challenge, so I wanted to see if I could do it. And the focus, I notice, isn't perfect, but Daisy will be back soon. She is working on a project um, for law school preparations, and so I'm on my own. So there you go. I will be back in a moment to show you the finished product. This will cook in the oven for approximately... 20 minutes and I'm at putting it in there with the fish. So see you in a moment. So welcome back and here is our finished meal. This is enough for two people. Um, yes, I put everything on one plate more so to get a picture of everything done on one plate versus a platter. But you could, you know, make a couple of these fish, you know, more ears of corn and more port, of course, a bottle of that, hopefully. And then you can put all of this out on a nice platter and serve several people, you know, maybe six to eight people. Um, like I said, this is enough to serve two. And having a nice crispy green salad with this is how I would top it off. And a refreshing dessert of like maybe a fruit citrus bowl, something like that. But thank you so much for tuning in. Please join us again in the Velvet Lounge. Also remember to subscribe, comment, share, and give us a thumbs up. And look at our other videos, hopefully for inspiration. And leave us some more comments with ideas. We have a fried chicken video that will be coming up soon due to a request. We were so excited to see that in the comments. So thank you so much and have a wonderful day. And when life gives you lemons, throw them back.